Hey everybody, John here. Welcome back to Catbird Hill. So, I was hoping <laughs> to be doing some uh, chainsaw videos, uh, a follow-up to the last one on dropping the pin oak. I've got a standing dead black cherry in the back of the property, which I really want to take that down, take it apart, and check the moisture content to compare it to the one that we did up at the other end of the property. Um, and I also wanted to do a follow a suggestion that was given to me by a number of you from that previous video on the pin oak when I was testing the moisture content inside the wood, but I was doing it at the bottom of the tree. So I want to uh, buck up a few sections or a few pieces at the top of the stem and open them up and check the moisture content there. Uh, I've been moving along with the sawmill. Uh, bits and pieces, trying to cal get it all calibrated and dialed in. There's a lot of uh, work being an entry-level sawmill that you have to do on your own to really get it set up perfectly so that you're you know, cutting nice and flat and even thickness. So we're working on that. It's been absolutely crazy weather here in southeastern Pennsylvania. We have had, let's see, today it is about 32 degrees right now. Uh, we actually had snow on and off for a few hours earlier today. Three days ago, it was 75 degrees here. So it is literally a roller coaster of temperatures. And when it gets that warm and we've had as much rain as we've had, it is a total mud bath here. So I can't even get the tractor out. It's just, I would be slipping and sliding and you know tearing everything up everywhere. So I figured today is a nice cold day. Uh, throw on a hooded sweatshirt and my ball cap and get out here in the afternoon and start splitting. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about some new uh, wood splitting tools I have, one of which I'm using right here. Uh, this is the council tool. I don't know if you can see the, uh, the embossing of council tool there. This is uh, their six pound, what they call forcible entry fireman's ax, although to me it really doesn't look like a fireman's ax. Um, but this is designed because of that wedge pattern, nice and thick here on the cheeks. Uh, it's designed to really be a splitter. And so I, I got this maybe a month or so ago. I did a short uh, on YouTube about it. I really liked it. I've been using it a lot over the past few weeks. It's really, it's really awesome. Um, I was using, I think, either a six or seven pound big triangle splitting wedge, like a, almost like a maul. And um, that just gets brutally tiring. Uh, you all know I have a splitter, but I do, I just like to manually split wood every now and then. I just really enjoy it. So um, I'd gotten this, and then right before I got this, I got another council tool. And this is essentially the same style of head okay this is the five pound splitter all right um, basically a very similar profile uh, it's got uh, chamfered edges on the heel here um, and it's just you know it's a, just a really nice nice tool this one is a perfectly straight handle and this one has a curve and a palm swell uh, in the in the bottom I actually would prefer a bigger palm swell for this type of a handle just because my hands are big. Um, but you know, each of them is, is really cool and fun to use. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep splitting. This oak that I'm, that I'm working on right now is actually the oak that I had gotten almost a year ago. I picked it up from our local county park service basically for free. Um, I had, oh my gosh, maybe five or six pickup truck loads of it uh, I, I picked it up in really big rounds and then what i did is after i got it home here i basically noodled it or blocked it i guess so they say into you know smaller sections that are a little more maneuverable and i've kind of had it propped up here it's been drying uh, it's splitting really well and I'm, I'm really as you know i'm trying to rebuild our supply of firewood this is all uh, red and white oak here and you, you just kind of can see what I did. I, I, was, I managed to uh, get these really nice, thin, but long pallets. These are probably about 10, 12 feet long each. You know, I put some shorter pallets on the end to serve as kind of uh, holds. And I'm, my goal is to fill all of these pallets. I actually have three of these. We'll sort of walk down here and 
sorry, I'm taking you through the trees here. Um, got one here and then a third one here, which I've been filling up. Uh, this is this is actually wood from the property. This is some cherry and maple um, that I've been splitting, a little bit of oak that I cut down. But the goal is to get these things filled. Um, and this location for firewood storage, um, this side of our property here is absolutely straight on facing the west. So we get prevailing wind moving through here. It's a great place to dry the firewood. Uh, and it gets full sun, I'd say, maybe six hours a day. So it's really a nice spot to do some, you know, some firewood uh, storage and drying. But what I wanted to do here is just play around a little bit with some cutting or some splitting. And we'll play around with the, the six pounder, which you saw me using. I'll do a few more cuts with that. And then we're going to go to the five pounder and just see, you know, how much of a difference, if any, is there. One thing that I really have not liked about uh, this free wood from the Park Service is it's beautiful wood. I mean, this is just like a massive piece of red oak, but it's, it's too long. I mean, obviously, I didn't cut this. I didn't buck this up, you know, at the park where I picked it up. It was already done, and, you know, they're not measuring for specific length. This is probably almost 20 inches long. It's just, it's too long for my fireplace. Um, but, you know, people have larger fireplaces or even fire pits. It'll, it'll, it'll be great. But my preference is to be in that 16 inch range. That's usually what most people like for wood stoves and so forth. That's my only complaint. Some of these pieces were just way too long for my liking. But nonetheless, it's really nice wood. It's just been, it's been splitting really well. As you can see, this thing really, really splits very, very well. I mean, it's I'm going to try to zoom you guys in there a little bit and get you a little a little closer to the action but it's just it blows the wood apart it really does all right so what we'll do is we're going to switch and we will go to whoa, now we're gonna to go to the five pounder. I think you can actually see there the, the embossing of five pounds. The six pounder doesn't have the number, but it is six pounds. So let's take a look and see. Basically, same type of wood, uh, red oak. And we'll see how this does. Definitely, even though it's only a pound, you really can feel the difference just in swinging it multiple times. Wow. <laughs> I even split the uh, chopping block there on that one. Yeah, this thing's awesome. Awesome. literally going right through the wood into the chopping block and breaking that up. Well, that was a bad hit. You can see what's happening to some of this wood. It's kind of getting punky on the bark. Um, but it was that way when I got it. You know, it had been sitting out a little bit when I picked it up. Yeah, this is really 
some cases I think that I really can't tell the difference in the effect of the the extra pound on the six pounder. We'll get a gnarly one on there. We've got a little bit of a knot in this one. You can kind of see it on the uh, on the uh, lower right hand side there. Let's see how the five pounder does with this guy. Huh. Not really giving me much trouble, that's for sure. Wow, it's great. Yeah, really, really nice tools. Ah, got a knot kind of in the middle there, in the bottom. Beautiful. Wow. Awesome. I'm literally just letting the weight of that head fall right into the wood. And it's really, really splitting very well. I'm loving it. So, just a quickie here today. Uh, I just couldn't resist. It was cold, and I just felt like splitting wood for a little while. I've got, you know, maybe another hour, hour and a half of splitting here, and get all this put in the rack and start drying it out. So thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> I would give a three thumbs up to either one of these tools, either the, the five pounder here or the six pounder here. Um, there you can kind of see the, the six pounders in my, my right hand there. You can see, you know, the profile's very, very similar. Uh, to, to each of these. The six pounder, I would say, has slightly thicker cheeks in this area right here. But I mean, the effect, you saw me splitting pretty big chunks of wood with the five pounder. Uh, the, you know, the, the outcome is really about the same. Uh, so I, I love them. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't recommend these more, more highly or more confidently. The price point's really good. So uh, I got these from Whiskey River Trading. From Brandon and his folks, um, they're an they're an official council tool dealer, and uh, I've been very happy with Whiskey River. It's you know it's one, become one of my favorite go-to companies for cutting tools, uh, axes, um, handles, sharpening uh, tools or sharpening implements for axes and so forth. Uh, very very happy with them. I think they also carry uh, Brant and Cochran axes which is a, a company up in Maine um, that I actually had the pleasure of visiting a few years ago when they were just starting out and they were uh, the really amazing little com kind of mom and pop company preserving the history of axes in Maine. But anyhow, I'll put a, I'll put a, a link to whiskeyrivertrading.com. I'll put that in the description below. So make sure you visit them and check out the stuff they have. So a little, a little bit of a different video today, but I, I just wanted to get something out there to you guys, let you know where we were with the other projects that you've seen. Uh, also, as a very important reminder, we've got about three or four days left before we draw a winner for the Husqvarna Chainsaw Chaps. That's the uh, video that I did prior to this one drop 
dropping the pin oak, you have to be a subscriber and you have to leave a comment on that video. Not, I mean, I want you to leave comments on this one too, but, but if you want to win the chainsaw chaps, you have to leave a comment on that previous video. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate all the support as we grow here. Until next time, John here from Catbird Hill. Take care.